Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Blessed and highly favored. Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are going to choose to rejoice and be glad in it, because we can. <laughs> a beauty. It's the beauty of being an offspring of eternal light. Yeah. Would you grab your swords? Hallelujah. Lord, grant us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Feed us this morning as we welcome the Holy Spirit to come and teach us. Because it's the anointing that teaches us, not man. Amen. Hallelujah. In the book of Revelation in chapter 1, In verse 4, would you read it with me? John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, a faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And he has made us what? Kings, which means what? Warriors. He has made us warriors. And priests. And priests are those who minister to the Lord. To his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. In verse 7, it says, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. Even they who what? pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him even so amen in verse 8 i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end says the lord who is and who was and who is to come the almighty in other words god himself came into this realm he has called me and you to be priests and kings. As a sign and wonder for his glory and a witness to who he is. He is coming. There's something very profound that we've got to grab hold here. And it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. In other words, I am the beginning and the Amen. end. The only way... That something begins new is for something to what? Come to the end. Amen? That's how things begin new. Now, when something, when you finally come to an end of something and it begins new, then there's an area where you must maintain the new. Because if you don't maintain the new, then... It comes to an end. Even new again will come to an end if it's not maintained. Amen? Amen. It says, but Jesus answered him saying, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces what? Much grain. And then he begins to explain what he's talking about because many people don't understand. Verse 25. He who loves his life will what? Lose it. So he's talking about life, our life in this realm. He says, he who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will what? Keep it for what? Eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will be honored. 
He says, now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Then what does he say? Father, glorify your name. Now, this is profound. This is phenomenal. Because in this, he's explaining the importance of that we must come to the end of our life so that we begin a new life. You know, we must come to a final decision. It's called final decision. And in this final decision, see, there are people that have been pro saying they love the Lord and following off and on and so forth, but they've really never come. They could be doing this for years over and over and over, but really never coming to the final decision. They still want to hold on to part of the old. See, they've never come to a final decision. And when you come to that final decision, which many people want to, they have good intentions, but they've never made the final decision to truly die to the old and live in the new. They still hold on. They still have hope. See, if you still have hope in anything of old, then you can't get new. Because you're still connected. Because new draw, uh, old draws from new. It will drain it. Why? Because old is associated with something that is trying to kill you. It's trying to kill you. Because when you and I were in the world, we were headed for death, weren't we? The enemy was trying to kill us the whole time. Not that he hasn't stopped. But he's been trying to prevent us from coming to the end of ourself and truly making that complete decision, the final decision. See, if you haven't made that final decision, we're still dangerous. You know, there's a, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Matrix, but there's a part in that movie where uh, uh, Morpheus is showing um, the other guys about the world, and, and people are walking by him. And uh, he, as, they're, as they're walking through, the and the crowd's coming towards him, and he's explaining to them that some people are not ready to get unplugged, get unplugged from the world. He said, but the world, he said, they may seem your friends, but until they're out of the world, they're still your enemy. So individuals that have really not made that final decision are still your enemy. Does everybody understand that? There is a difference. And I'm going to, you know, I had a vision and I'm, I'm going to explain it again. And I shared this before. And it was a crowd of people, a crowd, big group of crowd of people. And they began to separate. And as they began to separate, I began to see that the ones that were going forward were the ones that had no head. And the ones that had a head were going, getting behind the ones that had no head. Because the ones that had heads were still living for themselves. They were living out of their mind. See, they were actually, they really haven't made that final decision. There are people that say it, but really have not made that final decision. There's still hope of the old. There's still hope in the world. There's still hope in places that is preventing them to grow. Unless we die to the old, there can't be new. He's talking about life here in this realm. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 15. See, you can be an individual that says you want to, 
That's that someone that says, oh, I'll try. People that try don't make it. Only people that do make it. So you got to make the choice. Even the final decision. You must make the final decision that says, I'm not going to try anymore. I'm going to do. If you're still saying, I'm going to try, then you ain't made the final decision, and you're dangerous. Does everybody get this? Ooh, snap. 1 Corinthians 15. Would you want to hang around with someone that ain't, hasn't made a final decision yet? Why? Because there's an opportunity to still turn on you. First Corinthians 35, 15, 35. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? <laughs> you know, people that are always blaming other people for their stuff have never made a final decision. They're still blaming the world for what they're no people that are not willing to take their own responsibility are still have not made a final decision. I'm telling you, there are people that have been proclaiming to be believers and served the Lord and all kinds of stuff for 30 years and they still haven't made a final decision. There's still possible hope of the world, of the world's help. Verse 35, let's read it together. But someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it what? It's not made alive unless it what? Dies. It means it's got to come to an end. And we've got to come to that place where our, we've got to come to a place of final decision. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be but mere grain perhaps wheat or some other grain but god gives it a what body as he pleases and to each seed its own body so in other words now he's talking about afterwards after we depart from here why because your old body will be sown back to dust and you will get a new glorified body so even that must die to get what? New. But in the meantime, our life in this realm, there must be, there's got to be. It's most important that we come to a final decision to we say, I am not going back to the world. The world is not my source. I'm not going to hold, I'm not going to have no hope of this world. Nothing. My hope is totally in the Lord and he is my source and everything else is a resource. I'm going to share with you two important things that are vitally, vitally important in the area to where it keeps us if we allow it to. The first thing is never forget where you were. Amen. Never. When you forget where you were, it will change your final decision. Never forget where you were. And never forget the one who brought you out of it. Amen. If you will keep those things before you, you will keep the Lord before you. You never forget where you were and the one who brought you out. You keep those before you. And it will help maintain your final decision. Because even when you make your final decision, you must maintain it. Matthew 26. Remember, the world is under the sway of the wicked one, isn't it? 
You're being pressed and swayed in every area. Constantly. It doesn't stop. So that means that you and I must maintain that final decision. I'm, my life is no longer mine. It's the Lord's. My life is no longer mine. It's the Lord's. And we maintain that. I allow the Lord to build the house, not me. I'll have no other gods before me. My hope is in nothing else but Him. If my hope is in restoration of something of my past, then it's false hope. You haven't made your final decision. Your hope is only in him. Everything else he takes care of. Does everybody get this? Matthew 26. Is everybody there? In verse 6. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm still running across too many believers that have not made a final decision. And it baffles me. It baffles me. You know why? They forgot where they were. Does everybody get it? They forgot where they were. And they forgot the one who brought them out. They did not maintain their final decision. And they've allowed the world to exchange their final decision for a false hope. In verse 6, let's read it together. And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask, a very, very what? Costly, very expensive. Man, it could have fed a lot of people. Could have built homes. A very costly, fragrant oil. And she what? She poured it on Jesus' head. And Jesus said, said it, as Jesus sat at the table. When his disciples saw it, they were indignant. Saying, what? Why, why this waste, man? We could have used that cash. Man, you know how expensive that is? Lord, you see all the money that's been brought? This is twice the amount of money that's all been brought in. Just this little box. <laughs> Verse 9. For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for what? My burial. Wow. Why, he was going to die so a new can be released. So the anointing that we so desire is actually... For your burial. The anointing is to keep you in a dead state of being of self. Is everybody all right? Hallelujah. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Surely I say to you. Wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Powerful. What this anointing. See, there is a worldly, <laughs> they were so concerned about a worldly cost. Is everybody, uh, instead of eternal cost. When there is more concern of a worldly cost instead of an eternal cost, it prevents a final decision to be maintained. The word says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. In other words, I shall not want. Why? Because if you have him, you have everything. You don't need to search for anything. It will come to you. If you'll seek him with all of your heart, ask, seek, knock, it comes. And Luke 14.
Not only does it come, but he'll guide you to the right door. <laughs> so many people are knocking on the door, ain't nobody answering. Because there's nothing on the other side but deception. It's empty. Empty rooms, false hopes. Luke 14, verse 25. Now great multitudes went with Jesus, and he turned and he said to them all, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife, children, brother, and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. He cannot be an expression of me. He cannot be an expression of me. Why? Because they haven't made a final decision yet. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple or express me. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Why? Because they did not make the final decision, and they didn't maintain it. So you may make it. Now you must maintain it. In Psalm 116. So there's a place where you must forsake all to express him. Psalm 116. And become a part of the headless army. Those are the ones that made a final decision. Hallelujah. Psalm 116 and verse 12. You know, again, there is so much, um, so much influence, so much interference, so much coming in all areas of life. You know, more darkness has been released. There's more demonic activity. There's more influence in every area, every corner, everywhere you go. It's getting worse. The word says that imposters, more imposters, more increase of darkness. There'll be more deception. There'll be more hatred. There'll, there'll be more betrayal. There'll be all of these things. There'll be more of. But in that, God is pouring out more also for us to maintain. He always keeps us in an area to maintain and overcome. But that's a place where you must maintain that final decision. In verse 12, let's speak it. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will what? Pay my vows to the Lord. Now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the what? Is the death of his saints. It's precious to him. Why? Now look at He's not talking about physical death. He's talking about death to self. What good? Listen, you're no good here in this realm if you're dead. Physically dead. But if you're dead to self, you're good in this realm. <laughs> precious is the sight in the sight of the lord is the death of his saints O oh lord truly i am your servant i am your servant the son of your maidservant you have loosed my bonds what was he doing he was remembering what he has done i will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord. Now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of, Jer Jer of you, O Jerusalem. Praise you, Lord. See, what was he doing? He was remembering what God has done for him. He was maintaining his final decision. <laughs> How quickly we forget. How quickly we allow the enemy to steal those things from us. I, man, you know, and when you're going through something, you know, uh, one of the things that help you go through it is always know that somebody else is going through something worse than you. 
things could be worse. Amen? But then in that, we go back. And we remember where we were. And the one who's pulled us out of it. And if he can do it then, he can do it again. No matter what you're going through. But we must maintain the final decision. My hope is in the Lord and nothing else. My life is in his hands. I no longer have a life. I live for him and not for me. If you've not made that decision and kept it and hold on to it and maintain it, then we're easily deceived, manipulated, and can't be trusted. You'll sway like a teeter-totter. Up one day, down the next day. Up one day, down the next day. You'll walk in confusion. You'll walk like a drunk. Can't walk the straight line. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, you'll be led in how you feel instead of what truth is. Why? Because you allow feelings to dictate you instead of your final decision. Truth. Truth is the one that should dictate us in everything we do. Deuteronomy chapter 30. In verse 15, would you read it with me? Is everybody okay? Yeah. You know, one of the things we got to ask ourselves, have we truly reached our final decision and are we maintaining our final decision? Is there anything of consideration of going back to the world or any hope in the world? Then you've not maintained your final decision or maybe you've never reached it. See, some people use God instead of God using them. In verse 15, let's speak it together. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. In that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep, me, keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce you, to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over to the Jordan and go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. What did they say? to cling to him, grab hold of him. See, you've made a decision that you will never let go of him. Never. That's your final decision. And you maintain that final decision because you cannot let go. I will not let go no matter what storm. I will not let go no matter what. what no, I will not let go no matter what the bribes are of the world. No matter what the devil bribes me with, no matter mo how much money he offers me, no matter how much fame, no matter, no matter what, I will not let go. I have made my final decision. No matter what lust comes across my life, I will not let go because I've made my final decision. Do you understand this? This is where we must reach and maintain. 
we must make a final decision and maintain it. In the book of Joel, chapter 3, so one will serve life and one will serve death. Amen? Joel chapter 3. Joel. Joel. Joel's place. Go get a Holy Ghost drink. In verse 14. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Multitude, multitudes in the valley of what? This, many people are still in the valley of decision. Because they teeter-totter. Their final decision. They hold on it one day and let go of it the next day. They don't maintain the final decision. Multitude, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will grow dark, the stars will diminish their brightness. The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and the earth will shake. The Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy, and no alien shall ever pass through her again. Again, he's, so many people are in the valley of decision. They fall in it because they haven't made the final decision nor held on to it. In other words, there's that place where there's no turning back. There's just no, there's no choice, no turning back. There isn't even a consideration of it. If we want to cast down anything and cast off everything away from anything that the world will incline on touching a worldly past to influence separation between us and the Father of life. That's why the word says that many will fall from the faith. In the latter days, taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Many are. Because they've never made that final decision or they've lost it. In Daniel chapter 4. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And, and he called Daniel... To interpret this dream. In verse 19. So the king told the dream to Daniel. Then Daniel, whose name was Belazar, Belshazzar, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Belshazzar, do not let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Belshazzar answered and said, My Lord, may the dream concern those who hate you and its interpretation concern your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens and which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely and its fruit abundant and which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwell and, the, and whose branches the birds of the heaven had their home. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong, for your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens and your dominion to the end of the earth. And in, in as much as the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven, saying, chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. 
This is the interpretation, O king. This is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king. They shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. And inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my advice be accepted to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. What was he trying to tell him? Get back to the final decision that you've made because you've lost it. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 29, at the end of 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. And the king spoke, saying, is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling and my mighty power for the honor of my majesty? Oh, man. Whoops, he let go of his final decision. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives to whomever he chooses. That very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like birds. Here was a king that was just no longer human. He became an animal. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. You betcha. Yeah. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing but he does according to his will and the army of heaven and among the inhabitants on the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? Boy, did his tune change. At the same time, my reason returned to me for the glory of my kingdom and my honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and the nobles restored to me. I was restored to my kingdom and an excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways justice. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. So he exposed the enemy of pride. Pride turns people into beasts. And it causes an individual to forget the final decision that they've made. Oh... In other words, we must choose wisely before we drift. Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. How quickly we forget.
Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1. All foolish Galatians, all foolish children of God, <laughs> who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Oh, how quickly we forget. Amen? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it, indeed it was in vain. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of the faith our sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all nations shall be what? Blessed. Who has bewitched you? People have grown weak on their final decision. For the cost of life. And I don't mean eternal life. I mean this life. In Colossians 3. You know, even Jesus talks about losing our zeal for the house of God. Why? Because when that happens, we lost our final decision. We spend more time now in building our own empire instead of his kingdom. That's when you know you've compromised final decision. Colossians 3 and verse 1, would you read it with me? If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. And that's what we have to, what are we setting our mind more on? Does everybody understand it? Well, that will determine whether you're compromising your final decision or you're teeter-tottering it. What do you spend your thoughts more on? Well, I got a lot of things to do. Well, who doesn't? Are you laboring on to the Lord? Or are you laboring on to yourself? Is your purpose to expand the kingdom of God or to expand your kingdom? That's what you set your mind on, though. For what you set your mind on, you become a slave to. For you died, verse 3, and your life is hidden with Christ, in Christ, God, in God. With Christ, in God. Verse 4, would you read it with me? For Christ, who is our life, who is our what? Life. Wow. For Christ, who is our life, appears. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, what? Put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, who used to be the sons of obedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language, and all the unclean things of the world, and, out, and, and a filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the what? New man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcised nor uncircumcised barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you shall all, 
you also must, must, and must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be what? Thankful. 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 So these are areas that God is sharing with us to maintain our final decision, setting our minds. See, so many times when we're not, we're not seeing things all the way through. And the reason for that is because we're not maintaining our final decision. And everything we do, in other words, then the Lord's not in front of us. Even things that we purchase. If I'm going to purchase something because, you know, there may be good deals, but are they God deals? If it's going to interfere with me being able to pay my rent, if it's going to interfere with me paying my child support, if it's going to interfere with me, does everybody get this? If it's going to interfere with things that I'm supposed to do, then I'm out of order. And if I'm out of order, it's because I'm not holding on to my final decision that I've given my life to Christ. See, if I'm going to go purchase a car, a phone, a music, whatever it is, and I haven't done what I'm supposed to do first, then I'm out of order. And if I'm out of order, if I'm not paying my tithes and I'm out purchasing whatever, then I'm out of order. That means I've lost my final decision. If my heart is not set towards God in the area of he's before me and everything I do, then I'm out of order. I'm going to lose my final decision because my final decision has been made and it's solid, embedded. It's over and done with. And we hold on to it. We don't let it get swayed or stolen from us. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Psalm 16. Start at verse 1. Preserve me, O God, for in you I what? I put my trust. My soul you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my goodness is nothing apart from you. In other words, <laughs> I can't do anything without you. I'm, I'm, I'm undone without you. I have no life without you. I've made my final decision. I'm going to live in you. My goodness is nothing apart from you. Verse 3. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Why? Because he's not let go of his final decision, and that is to give his life to the Lord. Because he is at my right hand, I shall what? I shall not be moved. You cannot be moved from that decision. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul in hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. And I want to close at Psalm 15. So when we set the Lord always before us, it's because if we're not sending them before us, we've lost our final decision. We've, we've swayed from it. In other words, we do not allow anything to dictate our decisions. Nothing. But Him and truth. Again, never forget where you came from and who paid the price for you to come out of it. 
Psalm 15. Now he, he tells us, this is the counsel of the Lord. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle. Again, it goes back to what? Abiding. And that's something we talk about all the time. Abiding, abiding, abiding in, his, in, in prayer, in his word. Amen. Abiding in praise and in worship and abiding in fellowship. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill. Here it is. Here's everything. That, here's the conclusion. Are you ready? Let's read it together. He who what? Walks uprightly, works right righteousness, speaks the truth in his own heart. In other words, the self-examination. But you can't examine yourself if God is not before you. You won't even consider it. You'll just do what you think, what you feel. Does everybody get that? And what the world offers you. And begin to drift from your final decision because we lost where we came from and who rescued us. Yeah, I want to serve the Lord. I want to do this. I want to do that. You can't serve the Lord if he's not before you. And he doesn't want you to represent him unless you've maintained your final decision. Again, he who walks uprightly works righteousness, speaks truth in his own heart. Verse 3. He who does not what? Backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach to his friend. And whose eyes a vile person is what? Despised. But he what? Honors those who what? Fear of the Lord, reverence, honor, and respect. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. Don't you want to hang around with people that don't change? He who does not put up his money at what? Usury, bribes, tries to get people, manipulates. Does everybody understand that? He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he what? Take a bribe against the innocent. And he who does these things shall what? Never be moved. Never be moved. Never allow money to influence you. Never. And never use it to manipulate a person. Let truth. Let truth. Everything is truth. His word, truth. Why? So we don't give up our final decision. Amen? Lord, we are honored and blessed. I just pray today, Lord, that we have come to our final decision. Hold on to our final decision. of giving our lives to you and never turning, walking in truth, maintaining integrity in Christ's character so that we neither sway nor forget where we came from and what you've done. Father, let this seed grow in each and every one of us. Bring to remembrance consistently Holy Spirit I pray what you've imparted in us that you will bring to remembrance and quicken us so that we never lose or sway or compromise our final decision of giving our lives to you, of serving you, and following you all the way to the end, that we never be moved in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.